The father of one of those victims, Kaylee Conclava, is now revealing the manner of death for his daughter and her friend Maddie were different, leading him to believe one of them may have been the target. The heartbroken dad, Steve Conclaves, joins us now. Steve, before we start this interview, I just want you to know how much our hearts go out to you. Um, that I, I know from what I'm hearing from people everywhere that they are with you, they're praying for you, and they're also hoping for justice to come sooner rather than later for your daughter and her friends. Um, you mentioned here, you talked about the manner in which Kaylee and Maddie were killed is different. And what does that tell you? And what are the police telling you that that means? Um, there's a couple things that tell me with common sense, but um, I'm not a professional, so I want to specify that. But they've said the entry point was the slider or the window. It was in the middle floor. So to me, he doesn't have to go upstairs. His entry and exit are available without having to go upstairs or downstairs. Looks like he probably may have not gone downstairs. I, we don't know that for sure, but he obviously went upstairs. So I'm using logic that um, he chose to go up there when he didn't have to. And um, I can kind of tell by my daughter's texts, messages. She didn't call 911. She wasn't uh, saying anything along the lines of like she had heard something or she was in fear. So I'm just putting the, the, the dots together. Um, as far as the investigators, they're very tight-lipped and they're keeping everything close to their best. And I understand that. And I'm probably not the right person to share all these things with. So I'm just trusting them that their case is super tight and they don't really need to reach out to the community. And, um, you know, all the evidence is right there in that home. So, Steve, and I want to be respectful, as I can tell you're trying to walk this tightrope as well with law enforcement, but the desire to know and get some type of action as well um you you've said both now to rachel and then I, in in the clip in your appearance with lawrence jones that the, your daughter and and maddie had different means or manner of of attack and that suggests one of them was targeted um can you share with us do you know and you can't share either way which one was targeted i can't i asked for permission to do just that and they said no um i probably over disclosed information that they wish I wouldn't have said but this sto the story is going mm -hmm. cold there's less people coming to Moscow um, I'm not gonna go sleep in my bed knowing that I could get up and I could mm -hmm. go to town and I could I could do something and I'm not gonna go away and I, I hate to be a pain but as a father I just can't even sleep thinking that I, I could be doing something so that's that. that's why I'm not understandable wow let, let me ask the flip side too I, you you're, you're being respectful toward police about the fact that they need to be tight-lipped uh, but if there was something you felt like you deserved to know or you should know as a father at this point uh, are, are there questions you have unresolved from the police that you feel like hey just throw me a bone here and let me know for sure i mean alibis just share the alibi if you're not sharing an alibi to me it tells me that you're not 100 percent confident that it's going to stick or you have somebody who's going to come forward and say hey i don't know what he told you or or that person's alibi was but i have this information i have something so if you don't share the alibi it, it makes it a little bit harder for us to just let those go and, mm -hmm. and i've said it before i don't i don't want to make victims out of just bystanders and witnesses so i just share those things and um that that would help steve do you get the sense that you're being asked to not talk more and that law enforcement is being so tight-lipped to protect an investigation that is honing in on a conclusion or because they're totally lost and there is no real sense of direction. And I think all of us, we want to trust law enforcement. We want them to do their job. But I, I don't know if you know, I have no idea. Is this thing honing in at this point or is it scattered all over the place? Wish I knew for sure. I did sit down with the investigator, the lead investigator, and I, I looked in his eyes and I, I got a sense that this guy was going to do everything in his power to get to figure something out. But if the invest, but if if the evidence isn't there, that's that's the part that I'm concerned. And then there's layers of separation. The communication is not the same as the boots on the ground. All the officers that are out on the streets, those guys that are working their tails off, 
but there's a different person to do us the communication and that guy's sitting with the lawyer and that guy's sitting there telling him you know you got to protect things that are beyond the case like the town and the community and the and the, the mm. college itself those don't matter as much to me i mean i definitely don't want to hurt them but um i have an agenda and i think it's pretty clear it's a, it's it's these two girls and uh that's what i'm working for and i'm not going to let that story fall apart just because they don't want wanted posters, you know, on their next rush of students that come into town. Wow. You know, mm. I have to say, Steve, I hadn't really considered those factors, but it's obvious that that would be a consideration for the communications director of, uh, of the police department and also the PR for the school and the town. Are you communicating with the parents of the other victims? Are they feeling as frustrated as you are? And I hate to ask a two-part question, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do you feel confident in the police investigation and the people investigating right now? I, I do not feel confident, and that's why I push the envelope and say a little bit more. I hate to be that guy, but... Um, you know, there's a job to do for everybody has a job and a role to play in this includes. This is my role as the parent. I have talked to obviously Maddie's mother and, and her father, and I've talked to um, Zana's father. And uh, he, he said, hey, you can speak on behalf and you can help push this narrative. So I feel confident there. Um, that's as far as the real communications that I have. So one family have missed out to being able to be in the same location and the same thing to really get on the same page. So I try not to mention that and um, stay within my lane of what I, is my my role. And uh, I'm not trying to just gear it all to my daughter. It's just I, I can't speak for other people. Yeah, um, Steve. Before we let you go, just share a little bit with our audience about Kaylee. Kaylee was amazing, hard worker. She was like, she hung out with two boys, uh, her, her brother and her cousin, and she was right in between them. She wanted to be faster than them. She was that girl that was like, really like, she was kind of like a, 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 a punky Brewster type girl. And uh, we, we, we missed out on a, a really smart person that was going to um, be a little conservative. She was conservative too. She was always looking up stories on child you know, getting trafficked in. She was telling me that she thinks it's a lot bigger than, than people understand. So, and, you know, we, 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 we can't replace her, guys. Mm. There's no replacing any one of these people. Steve, we're all parents on this, yeah. on this couch, I and um, I just can't tell you how much we feel for you and can't imagine what you're going through, you and your whole family. Um, and I know that you came on the show today because you're hoping that people that might have information, you're hoping that more information come forward. And so we encourage anybody to call 208-883-7180. The phone number is on the screen right now. And I've heard you say it before, Steve. It could be anything. You have no idea how small the piece of information could be that could help. You know, and Steve, good on you for agitating. We yes. Need more, we need more men and fathers willing to do precisely what you're doing, um, keeping people honest and, and working toward a solution. God bless you. You're doing your daughter's right memory proud. And frankly, you're an amazing example of, of fatherhood, even after something tragic like this happened to her.